What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Aryan. I'm a first year dental student studying at the University of Dundee and that's just up north in Scotland. Um, so this video is gonna be episode number nine of the UK Dental School series. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about Queen's University Belfast. So it's not gonna be by myself, um, I've got Taha who is a fifth year dental student at Queen's Belfast to talk to you guys about his experience at Queen's Belfast and give you an insight into the dentistry program there. So as usual you're going to find timestamp in the video on the screen of course in the description below and also as a pinned comment if you want to use that and jump to a specific section that you want to find out more about. And yeah so also before we start Taha has his own Instagram page and I'm going to put the link to his Instagram page down in the description below if you wanted to drop him a DM and ask him any questions about Queen's University Belfast then you can do that so yeah that's everything from me let's go and find out about Queen's University Belfast uh, hi guys so my name is Taha I am a fifth year then student at Queen's University Belfast. I am actually a graduate, so I graduated from Queen Mary University of London with a first class degree. I did biochemistry, so after that, after the three years, I applied to Queen Mary, I applied to Dundee, I applied to Queen's Belfast, and I then also applied to the graduate school in Aberdeen. Um, now I got all four interviews, uh, but the only university that accepted me after my interviews was Queen's Belfast. Um, if I'm being honest, Queen's wasn't really my first choice to go to. I think anyone from London or even like mainland UK probably is a bit hesitant to go all the way down to Belfast in Northern Ireland. Quite a far place to go. Um, but hey, like it was the only one that I got accepted into, so I was going to go anyway. And probably one of the best decisions I've, I've actually made is to go to Queen's Belfast. So I did chemistry, biology, ICT and uh, maths. So I dropped ICT and AS level and then I carried on with chemistry, biology and maths and I got an AAB when I was applying through sixth form. I actually got no interviews. Um, I think it was just a very tough year to sort of apply to dentistry and I actually remember this was back in 2013. Queen's University Belfast was actually first place in the complete university guide around then either first or second Queens was always on my radar to go to by the time I applied to it it had dropped in rankings but you'll come to find when you go to university that rankings don't really matter that much especially with these courses because they're they're sort of a very similar course the GDC requires every single university to follow a certain criteria the GDC is a regulating company for dentistry in uh, the UK um, for me it was more so the social aspect and the way people talk to each other, the way people interact with each other, you will notice a lot of people are affected by how the teeth look um, and how confident they are. And I think that's what really got to me. I think alongside helping someone increase their sort of natural health and keeping their sort of dentition really healthy um, and the whole mouth environment healthy, you also have like a very good psychological impact on how they interact with other human beings and obviously through quarantine we've like discovered everyone's sort of like a social animal we don't like staying at home we like talking to other people doing things with other people and if dentistry affects that like that's what really got me into it so what drew me to my chosen university i think i ranted about this like a little bit earlier but it was basically the only choice i got but again i wouldn't take it back i wouldn't if I got expect, accepted into any of the other universities, I think the only one that I would kind of consider is Aberdeen, just because um, if you're a graduate student, you have to fund your own tuition fees. Um, and Aberdeen, obviously being a graduate entry course, um, you, some of that gets funded, so it would have been a bit easy on finances, but otherwise I wouldn't do any other five-year course around the UK. Um, now that I know that I've studied at Queen's Belfast, um, my experience here has been a lot better than when I studied at Queen Mary. Yes, they were like different degrees, but so the campus environment and living out and it's just a very good change and I'll talk about that in a second as well. 
in first year you'll be mainly in what they call the MBC which is a medical biology center and that's where all the biomeds are that's where all the medics are pharmacists everyone sort of starting out the degree okay uh, you'll also be based in the Royal Victoria Hospital where the school of dentistry is okay so this would be like the equivalent of like um, so sort of the dental school in the universities how they have different campuses like Bars to Queen Mary kind of thing. This would be the School of Dentistry to Queen's Belfast. Um, in first year, you're not really based on the Royal Victoria that much. You'll be there for like observations and uh, CTL labs, which are sort of phantom head labs in practice, just sort of practicing using the drill and things like that. So they sort of get you into those things quite early on. But you'll mainly be on there in the MBC, and it's a very sort of theory based um, year. Um, and then going into second, and then in third year you're almost always at the Royal Victoria Hospital um, and you won't see the NBC ever again so so first and second year you'll be on two campuses and then in your third year on you'll start seeing that you're on just the Royal Victoria Hospital where the School of Dentistry is. The university actually has three libraries so one's the Maclay which is honestly huge okay so you such a huge like sort of space for all the Queen's students to study then you have the MBC library, which is a smaller library, is based in the MBC, which is a medical biology center, like I said before. And then you have the medical library, which is based in the Royal Victoria Hospital. That's where also the dentists and the medics go, and it's a pretty modern library, it's pretty nice, um, pretty quiet, and all the libraries are there to help you in each of the libraries, um, just like any other university. In first and second year, it's very theory heavy. Um, and you'll find that in with a lot of dentistry courses, you know, you, you need theory before you start doing the practical aspect and stop treating patients, okay? So if you don't know what you're doing, you can't, you're not allowed to treat patients. And, you know, if I was sort of getting my teeth done by a student, I'd kind of want them to know a little bit about what they're doing. So that's understandable. So in first and second year, it's very theory heavy. Although in second year, you're in the phantom labs a lot. And then you also do an LA course, so local anesthetic. So you actually go into clinics and give local anesthetic to like patients who sort of are being treated by the senior years. And that's actually sort of a very like fun first time experience. Like your hands like trembling all the time and the supervisor kind of grabs it and is like, okay, go for it like that. So it's a it's a it's a good experience to actually like get hands on straight from second year and start treating doing some sort of treatment on the patient, you know. Um, you'll obviously be doing a lot of history taking and all these basic things during first and second year you're doing a lot of practice on the phantom head like the fake teeth um, but again that's very similar to all the, the universities in terms of optional modules there's no optional things okay so I feel like with dentistry like I said the GDC sets a certain criteria for you to be a safe practicing dentist at the end of fifth year so there's no optional modules they're all compulsory so because you have to hit certain targets and certain aspects of the GDC guidelines um, and if you're doing interviews I would have a read of the GDC guidelines online it's a quick document it's not that big um, and it might be helpful in your interview just to get you those extra points in second year it does get a bit more heavy because you start going to like the Royal Victoria Hospital campus which is a bit further away from um, sort of the accommodation where you kind of want the accommodation and it's sort of you're in more in terms of hours that you put into the course. Um, I remember when I was doing biochemistry, I was only in that much in third year when I was doing my research project. But from second year on, you're in quite a lot uh, and doing quite a lot of things. You will have mornings off and afternoons off here and there, so time to relax. But you are quite into the things. Um, for example, in second year, you have about eight modules to do. Um, which is quite hefty if you think about it. And then from third year on, you start treating patients. Third year, it's a bit more chill. Um, the timetables are a bit more open, um, less theory heavy. So you'll have lectures in between clinics and the lectures are only about an hour long or 30 minutes long sometimes. So third year is a bit more relaxed, but now from fourth year and fifth year, they're very, very, very busy. So I think get everything that you want out of your system before third year and then go into dentistry with sort of a headstrong attitude from third year on or maybe fourth year on uh, because you won't have time to do anything else um, but it's fun it's fun to treat patients and um, being in clinics with your friends and just having some banter with patients and and, and your little group um, that actually reminds me so in 
in third, fourth, and fifth year, you're always given like small groups. Now, Queen's Belfast is quite a small school, so we're about 60 people every year. Um, and that kind of dwindles down to people, about 55 people to 50 people as people sort of drop out or interclay or fail. Um, so it's quite a small school. And the benefit of that is we have quite small teaching groups. So we have groups of 10 in clinics with uh, two to three supervisors uh, in the clinics at all times. So kind of getting, you're kind of getting a lot more attention and a lot more time from supervisors on your work than other universities, um, I think. Queens, I was talking to one of the supervisors um, and he actually told me that Queens actually has more than the average number of supervisors per student kind of ratio um, and I think that's pretty cool. The timetable in first year is very, 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 especially because I, I've done a degree before, it's very, very chill. I found I found as a graduate in first year I just had all the time on my hands. Um, like I said, I did rowing first and second year, and anyone who does rowing knows that it's very sort of time heavy. It's a very demanding sport, and I was able to do that without a problem. Passed all my exams with really good grades, and you know, in first year you have the time in the world. Um, it's all theory. It's all easy to learn and easy to sort of absorb, especially if you're a graduate and you're used to university life. So in terms of style of teaching, the teaching is great. Honestly, I can't I can't advocate for the teaching enough. Again, I draw on my experience from Queen Mary where some of the supervisors were great, some of the teach lecturers were great, but Queen's is just the lectures are so much nicer and they just have the time for you. Even if they don't have the time, they'll make time for you and I think that's great. They're very they're very they want you to they want you to pass, you know, they they don't want you to fail. If you if you're lagging behind, they'll call you in and they'll be like, hey, look, we've noticed that you're sort of not doing as well in your practicals. This isn't like a serious talk, but like, you know, you're not doing well in your practicals. How can we help kind of thing, I think. And I think that's that's great, you know. It's a, it's a very supportive teaching staff and you almost kind of, they kind of like um, sort of become your parents in a way. It's, I know it's weird that thing, but it's, you know, you see them sort of every day almost in clinics and every week and... He's, you have banter with them, you have serious moments with them. I think it's a, it's just a great set of, great set of sort of clinical staff that I've gathered. Like the senior management, they're not, you know, they might seem scary at first, but the senior management's so approachable, they're so nice. Um, and they're all such great lecturers and such great sort of clinicians. Um, throughout the five years, you um, are always doing observations. So because you always have something to learn, you're still a student, you know, you're not a, if you're in 50 you're not an expert at like things like occlusion or something like that so you're always you're always you're always observing and it's great to see some of these guys do their work especially when you're 50 and you start seeing more complicated things happen um yeah it's just all around i'm very impressed with the teaching and the facilities are great as well and i think with the current facilities i think they're great but queen's university belfast is actually renovating um itself so I know that like a few years ago, Queen Mary got their brand new sort of Royal London Hospital and I went to the open day at that and it's a great facility. Queen's Belfast is doing the same currently with the School of Dentistry so if you're in the next year or the year after you'll be in such nice clinics like the brand new chairs, the latest technology, it's uh, an amazing place to practice. So in terms of outreach, you do go on outreaches. So they have a few community clinics, what we call community dental practices around Belfast. Um, again, there are walkable distances. If you if you fancy like a 40 minute walk. Um, but again, a lot, of your, a lot of your classmates who are from Northern Ireland will have uh, cars and things like that. And everyone's so nice that everyone just carpools and stuff like that. So this, I mean, this year I was always sort of just walking over to a friend's house five minutes away and carpooling with them to the outreach and you know there's no issue some friends would always drop people back from outreach or even come in from home people who are living at home come into Belfast at home and then drive people out to the outreach from there so it's 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 very easy and very uh, good to go to so the outreach are mainly Pete's clinics and sort of community dental clinics um, and the supervisors there are great as well. So you have sort of five peds con consultants and some special care consultants as well. And the teaching, the teaching is actually top notch. Um, and then these facilities are again brand new. I think one of the centres, Beach Hall, is absolutely brand new. And 
probably has one of the nicest chairs I've like seen in a while in uh, any of the dentist schools on my open days and things so that's something to take into consideration so in terms of electives so Queens is not a big fan of electives you can do electives um, the Bank of Ireland actually because you're based in Northern Ireland the Bank of Ireland will give you a £10,000 loan to do an elective okay you won't get that anywhere else like um, they do that for Dublin they do that for Cork down south in the Republic of Ireland and they do it for Queen's Belfast in Northern Ireland so you'll get £10,000 to do your elective and it's a very like student loan issue so very low interest rate and you've got time to pay it off um, and I think that's a great sort of incentive for doing electives at Queen's um, the dental school doesn't really comment on electives just because electives can be a bit unethical you know you can't if in third year you've just done a few fillings, you can't just so go into a third world country and be like, okay, yep, I'm an expert at fillings and start filling everyone's teeth. Um, so I think that's the approach they kind of take with the electives, but it's always good to like go abroad and volunteer and maybe do sort of local anesthetic or maybe do like dental nursing and things like that. And that's completely fair. But Queen's Belfast as a university as such does not have an elective program, but you are free to do electives by yourself if you want to or like going to elective schemes by yourself in terms of assessments it's very it's very similar okay so it's very similar to the other universities that you might have seen um and the assessments take form of written exams and you know that's that's pretty obvious um but you also have sort of oskis and things like that where you have to do history taking and sort of show that you're competent at certain things such as they'll they'll say hey look take a bite wing radiograph of this person they have this issue um so you have to take the right kind of bite wing radiograph or you know on the right side or an IOPA or whatever is indicated um so there's OSCEs like that there's also competencies throughout the year so let's say I just did the endo course um I have a competency where I'll be called in and I have to do an endo on a fake tooth uh, throughout the throughout the whole process and there'll be a teacher with me there and he'll just be assessing what I say and how I do things um, and that's just if you pass the competency then you can do that on the real patient if you don't you have actually three goes okay so if you don't by the second go you will probably pass by the third go you will definitely pass so it's nothing to worry about too much it's just so you will just sort of you know, need that extra bit of time you have to come in when the new other people are off and things like that so it's just a bit inconvenient but again if you know that's a c inconvenience is better than failing sort of your competency um and you know they really guide you through it like they don't they really don't want you to fail but yes yeah, so that's where so written exams at the end of the year oskis at the end of the year and then competencies during the year um and then there'll be a few class tests here and there and sort of a coursework bit here to do but there's not a lot of sort of in in year exams. Some final thoughts on sort of Queen's University. I'm obviously from, well, not maybe not obviously, but I'm from um, London, and I would have never chosen this university as a first choice straight off the bat. But now that I have sort of studied at Queen's and been a Queen's student, been a sort of the BDSA president, been like you know nominated by my whole class as as someone to sort of you know organize things for them um i think it's it's been a very amazing experience um in terms of rankings i know um queens isn't sort of high up there but it has been for quite a few of the past years and it's only dropped because a lot of the schools have improved their facilities and queens is about to improve its facilities so you could probably expect it to go high in the rankings again um, in terms of students' fair satisfaction, if you look at the rankings, Queen's is always sort of near the 100% mark in student satisfaction, and I think that goes a long way. A lot of these universities might be top at the course, but sometimes when you look at the student satisfaction, it's a little bit low. Um, I think the Queen's student satisfaction is very high, and I can kind of see now that I'm studying at Queen's why that is. Um, so it's something to take into account, and you know. It's, it's something to not you know, focus on too much, I think, in terms of the rankings, because they always go up and down. and So if they don't carry much weight, as long as you have dental BDS at the end of the year, it's more so your clinical experience 
when you do foundation training um, after fifth year and so sort of what you do after that that counts a lot in terms of um, studying at Belfast um, you know, it's the it's the home of Game of Thrones you have a mixture of both a city sort of life and a country life which I think is always really good so if you again because I'm just comparing it with London because I live in London but if you compare it with London which is always city 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 um, we, Belfast is very good for you can stay in the city and do things there and then you can actually go to the countryside and the north coast which is absolutely beautiful um, and actually explore the view of Northern Ireland and Ireland down south as well because there's actually no border so you can sort of drive your way down or take the bus down or take the train or bus down to Dublin or even Cork and things like that um, and actually we help with that because every year the three the three the three schools on the um, island so Northern Ireland uh, Belfast um, and then Dublin down south and then Cork we organize a formal between three schools so we always have this thing called the IDSA which is the interdental um, formal and we sort of rotate around so last year we actually went down to Dublin um, this coming year it will be in Cork the next year will be in Belfast and it will sort of circle, circle again and it's a great way to meet new people and do um, sort of travelling and things like that so I think that's something that's very good with Belfast you can you have the opportunity to sort of on the weekend go to a friend's house who lives in the north coast and you know and just chill by the seaside and things like that so that's a lot of that is something to consider because dentistry is it's not that stressful I do say that because maybe I'm a graduate it's but it is a stressful degree and you will need sort of outlets for stress um, for me that was sort of the gym rowing and sort of doing all this traveling for other people it's other things um, but it kind of helps when you're in a place like Belfast um, that you can sort of go out of the city and sort of grab an Airbnb with friends have a barbecue and things like that so yeah I hope you guys found that sort of useful and I hope you guys are considering coming to Queen's Belfast um, next or well, if you are coming to Queen's next year I'll probably see you in fifth year and I uh, hope you guys are coming the year after as well it is a great university and I think it's quite isolated from everyone so everyone's like mm, not sure if I want to go but uh, probably the best decision I made was going to Queen's Belfast um, as always I think Aryan is doing a great job with these videos um, so make sure you guys give him a like and subscribe to his channel and then I'll actually ask him to add like a, my Instagram handle here so that you guys can contact me for any questions um, about coming to Queen's and things like that um, or just anything about dentistry that you if you're feeling like you want to do dentistry or things like that so feel free to contact me um uh, good luck guys on your applications and everything and i hope to see you in the future right so that brings us to the end of this video i hope you've enjoyed the video and you learned something about queen's university belfast if you did find the video useful then let me know by a liking this video and b commenting below and letting me know your thoughts um if you haven't subscribed to the channel already you can do so now and don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified when I release the next episodes on this series or any other videos on the channel. Um, so yeah, that's everything. Take care and I will see you in the next video. Peace and goodbye.